come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We really appreciate it that you're listening, by the way. Welcome to the Freak Show family. This is a movie review podcast where every week we watch a movie that's chosen round robin by one of the internet radio superstars. And who are they? Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Colin. What did we watch tonight? We watched a movie called Near Dark. This is from the year... God's name. 1987, and directed by Catherine Bigelow. Her first? No. Yeah, her, her first solo effort. Right. Yeah, oh, she, she had done a movie it. called The Loveless, which was the film debut of Willem Dafoe. Wow. Like a biker. I can understand mm-hmm. why Willem Dafoe would be Loveless. Yeah. Yeah. He's not a, wait, not he, a pretty wait, man. Wow. He was, he was a biker. fired at William, <laughs> yeah. Willem Dafoe, man. Leather. He's trying to start a camp. beef with Willem Dafoe? Uh, man, I man, bring it on. <laughs> Me and Willem Dafoe starts now. Yeah. I just can't see him as a biker. Or a lover. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what this Damn. movie's about. But. I've seen the trailer. That's about it. Uh, Biker gang rides into town. They're bad news. I don't know. Okay. Of course they're bad news. Are they yeah. ever good news, Colin? No. Uh, they're bikers. Uh, I'm sure he was a scary Hooligans. looking young man. Was he in Streets of Fire? Yes, he, yeah, was. he was. He was a scary as looking a man. Yeah. As, as a, a biker. biker. He was yeah. a scary man looking man in <laughs> yeah. Streets of Fire. I remember that. Ugh. He's got that severe jawline. He's a he scary does. He's just, Especially just, when he was yeah. younger, he was like thinner. So it's just, he looked yeah. like Nosferatu, yeah. basically, yeah, 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 yeah. as yeah. a young man. So it wasn't a stretch. Yeah, was a, it wasn't a stretch when he played Nosferatu. Yeah. 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 Exactly. They had to do minimal makeup on him for that. Uh, we should also mention that, uh, and thanks for listening to us. Please give us a like or a comment on, uh, you know, iTunes, uh, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever you found us, and you can write to us. And we hope that you do. We love it when you write to us because why else are we doing this? Yeah. So you can appreciate sure. it and tell us how we're doing. You can get us on uh, Facebook, Facebook dot com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can follow us on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. You can email us Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo dot com. And you can get us on Instagram, and that's at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, yeah, so Catherine Bigelow uh, like went on from this movie. Anybody see Blue Steel? I have seen Blue Steel. I, I like yeah, Blue I Steel. Have too. I haven't seen it. So it's is good it movie. like tonally anything similar to this movie? It's uh, yeah, to this movie. Uh, I mean, it's it's a drama. Um, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, and I forgot who the other guy Ron is. Ron Silver. Ron Silver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a very dramatic movie. Um, that's the common factor. Dramas. That's basically, it's a drama, <laughs> right. but it's. Uh, would you have? It I mean, feels he- it's if it's heavier than this movie. Yeah, I would say, and this I one doesn't I'm feel too to, heavy. I'm trying to track like the career of Catherine Bigelow mm-hmm. through, like you know, I mean, the Loveless, like I said, we haven't seen Near Dark, Blue Steel, then Point Break. Yeah, I was gonna say we're burying the lead here, man. Point Break right. is yeah. Yeah. Right. You said all right. Yeah. Point Break. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I learned my lesson. I yeah. listened to that that episode that <laughs> yeah. we did. <laughs> on Point Break, not Point Break. It's Point Break. Point Break. Yeah, it's not what I say. Well, yeah. You're saying it wrong. No. Now. That's fine. <laughs> and uh, uh, so then it was like, okay, so she's someone who does like action thrillers or something because mm-hmm. her next movie was Strange Days, which was I believe written and produced by James Cameron. I think he produced Point Break. Probably. Yeah. Kind of well, offhandedly produced this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that's why we're saying there's a James Cameron connection here because aside from them being married, yeah, mm-hmm. but they weren't married at, <laughs> not at during this, this point time. In time. No. They so were tr- like get like getting dating, dating, getting to know each other at this point. In time. Friends with benefits. He was on the set a lot. Yeah. for this movie was he? Mm-hmm. Is that what the yeah? Yeah, I don't think it was included in the final cut, but there was like a scene where he had like a cameo as a hitchhiker. Oh shit! So I don't think that made it, but. Yeah. yeah, he was on he was on the set a lot. And he when he basically told her when she was like working on this movie and they were hanging out, he was like, Well, why don't you just take my cast for aliens? And that's how we got the cast for this movie. Yeah, because he she takes she poaches three or he loans. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, he works. suggested it. Three yeah. cast members from Aliens, which is really weird. This is the following year. So they basically came off of Aliens and went straight in a near dark three people from one movie directly over into another. That's uh, Bill Paxton, the late, great Bill Paxton. Yeah. Uh, Lance Henriksen and Jeanette Goldstein. Mm-hmm. She seems the one. She seems to be the one who got the short end of the stick on the long uh, run of the career. I think she's only appeared in like James Cameron movies, right? She was the mother yeah. in Terminator Two. Yeah, she was in Lethal Weapon Two. She was. Yeah, she got blown up. She yeah, jumped off the diving board and yeah. blew up. Yeah, <laughs> and I that don't know her? what she's done. That was her. <laughs> she's the half gainer. <laughs> yeah. 
plus there's that really prominent like nod to aliens when Caleb, our main character, is oh, walking down theater. the street and you yeah. see the theater marquee, the marquee. says aliens. Yeah. They hang on it for a bit there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's how you show your love right there. Mm-hmm. We're going to put your movie on <laughs> the marquee. Um, so this uh, is kind of like a cousin podcast to one we did several months ago about the Lost Boys. Why? Because they both came out in the same year of 1987. They were both uh, released within a a couple of months of each other. And both basically cover very similar ground as far as vampire lore. There's another connection to the Lost Boys with this movie. Leather jackets. (laughs) Nope. No. Anybody? Anybody? Uh, It's in the cast. There's a cast member has a relation to a Lost Boys cast member. Is there a Sutherland in this? Is Uh, Is that kid someone's brother? It Oh, got that annoying kid. So this is Joshua Miller. That's Jason Miller's son. Jason Miller is the priest from The Exorcist. His other son is Jason Patrick. Oh, wow. There it is. Lost Boys. Yeah. Yeah. Bam. Wow. Things you didn't know until tonight. Things That's that why we're know. here, the Saturday night. That preaching. annoying kid from Teen Witch. Yeah, Jason that Patrick's annoying brother. little brother from didn't Teen know. Witch continues his quest of being an annoying little kid and everything. <laughs> when was Teen Witch? It was after this. It was like oh, two was? years after this, yeah. But he did not grow much or look any different, mm. really. <laughs> that was, was after this? Yeah. I thought it was early 80s. I think it was like two years after this. It we'll looks so early 80s. Real quick. Why didn't Joshua they get them Miller. all together and make like a join the Teen Wolf and the Teen Witch? And why was there <laughs> Teen Witch was actually a reaction not, to Teen Wolf. Well, that's what I figure. Yeah. That's why I'm saying, why is there not a crossover between yeah. those? I mean, we have a whole vampires. world. Teen vampires and whatnot. Yeah, well, I guess you got enough of those, so. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, they all join a little, make a little group. Yeah. Joshua Miller's got the short end of the stick. Cause yeah, I think Teen Witch was 89. In, oh, wow. Yikes. Well, in 86, <laughs> I saw him as uh, he was Keanu Reeves' his brother in a movie called River's Edge, which I would recommend. It's a kind of heavy drama, but, like, he plays basically the exact same character. So he's he annoying. In this movie. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Well, he's got like a look or a presence. I don't know. There's something. He has, about a, punch- a, look. He has a punchable face. I'll say a look. He, I would say does. No, presence he's, he's is giving so him does. too much. Yeah. I'd say look. Uh huh. Yeah. He's listening to this right face. now, and he's like, "Why well, do they hate me?" So why was I such a no? Go ahead, kid? write us some hate mail, yeah. dude. I'll gladly yeah, bring it on. I'll did talk he, to you. Did he like grow up to starting beefs tonight? Yeah. Did he grow up to do anything? No. Just he does. Did he grow up? Yeah. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! I actually I look beef for everyone. Yeah. You want beef? You yeah. want beef? Damn! We're having to start beef with everyone tonight. All right. Well, did you guys get like a thematic uh, and maybe uh, plot like similarity between this and the Lost Boys, or am I reaching? Mm, no, not there plot. Was, uh, there was a similarity with just a recruiting, game. recruiting somebody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There was there was, yeah. there was a lot of similarities with that that arc. Yeah. For sure. Well, we mentioned this on the Lost Boys episode, but this is something that, like, I think is, uh, I don't know if it's distinct to these two movies, uh, and that's why I'm saying it's ironic that they came out the same year. It's the, It was when they took the idea that uh, the vampire, it, you mm-hmm. know, wasn't going to be some uh, creature that comes into your social Blah. circle and no decimates blows. it. You right. have to go kill it. This is the... You can be a vampire and right. like enjoy the you know the, the powers that come with it, the, become the superhero basically kind yeah. of thing, right uh, the superpowers that come with being a vampire but the, without the commitment right both of these movies end up with our hero uh, being cured right. yes which is mm-hmm. kind of like it would take you know until you get to like the Blade movies or the Underworld movies or something like that where it's like our interview with the vampire I suppose right where you're just like we're committed these people are not coming back right yeah. <laughs> I just looked up Joshua Miller and what he's doing now. Uh, the last thing he acted in it was in 2007. He was in the Wizard of Gore remake. Oh, shit. I saw <laughs> he that. He was a character named Jinky. Hmm. That was oh. a Christian and, Glover. Yeah, and then he uh, wrote, the, wrote the, the, the screenplay for the Final Girls. He what? He wrote the screenplay for oh, the yeah? Final Girls, yeah. Oh, really? So that's Yeah, good for him. That was a decent movie. Okay. So. Still out there yeah. working. You get it, boy. Yeah. <laughs> we do mean boy. He probably looked the same that you did back then. Is there a picture? No, there no picture? he doesn't. He really doesn't here. I'm very, I'm very curious. Is what there a picture of him now? just like doing this with giant muscles? Like, I, has he changed I wish. a lot? That, that, that was great. the Atlas pose for you. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. That would be fantastic. If he, <laughs> he's uh, trying to do like an Adrian Gre- Grenier sort of so vibe. He's little, so he's but he's creepy, not, he's he's not pulling it off, though. What are we going on? This is an IMDB photo? Yes. So the photo he chose to represent himself. No, but it's just Black like it's just kind of hipster looking. Like he looks like a normal dude. Hair. Yeah, mm-hmm. looks like a normal dude. We're Good making a big deal out of him, but he's basically a vampire child. Yeah. This mm-hmm. is an idea that was first created, I think, by Anne Rice, right? Yeah. 
the Claudia character. The Claudia, yeah. So from just, Interview with a Vampire. Damn vampire child. Yeah. But I've seen Lost Boys as well. Before. Well, yeah, I suppose, right? Laddie? Yeah. yeah. They did it also. What's with, they what's did. With the, and what's with the kids? They're always just like wearing big coats. Like he was wearing an old, it looked like an old army jacket in Lost Boys. Mm -hmm. He's got like a suit coat in this one. He always got those he old like ass. Little Beatles drummer in the last place. Uh, kind of, yeah, basically. Like yeah. Sergeant Pepper. Like Sergeant, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did. He looked like he had tails and everything. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Do you think that the fact that his character's name was Homer was like meant to imply that like he's been That's around forever? Been around? Yeah, like he he is the Homer <laughs> of the Odyssey. <laughs> And the Iliad, he's that, that Homer. Be, that would be funny. Little do we know, Homer was like a twelve-year-old boy this whole time. Yeah, where's that movie where all the historical figures of the past are Bill all still Jackson. alive as vampires? Oh, <laughs> the like, Washingtonians. It was an episode of uh, Masters of Horror. No, I, I might be mischaracterized. Yeah. <laughs> you might be. <laughs> <laughs> except, except they're like a superhero league in the future. That uh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm Copyright it. I'm coming in. I'm coming up with an idea here. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna hold that one to myself and figure that one out. Well, Sean and Holly hadn't seen this movie before tonight. True. No. Okay. So Always wanted to. Going into it. Well, okay. So I guess you hadn't seen this uh, atrocious cover art. Uh, I've seen. I've seen it in uh, disc replay before. I had I've, never. Seen I've picked this. it up and looked at it, and I just. Ugh, it, uh, it is uh, atrocious. Yes, yeah, so we have two different video boxes. It's the re-release. Like, oh, we need to make it look sexier for a young audience nowadays because nobody's look, buying the near dark Blu ray. Yeah. It, it was look, released on Blu ray and it looks like a Twilight knockoff. It yeah. looks almost exactly like Twilight. There's like, there's a lot of Photoshop that went into it to make it look that way. Like, she's the vampire, but in this, she looks like like a normal person with like, you know, peach and, peaches and cream skin. And then he looks like fucking Edward. Yeah, he almost, it, he's like, almost sparkling. Like, mm. honestly, this doesn't even look like those two actors. No, like, if you told me that was stock image of different people, I'd be like, he, yeah, 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 it is. Like, he like has, she's way blonder than it's portraying her on the cover of this. Yeah, and, he even has kind of like a gold, chin. like goldenish eyes, yep. which is definitely a Twilight thing. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, this is uh, not truth in advertising no, right here. Not at all. This is a straight up lie in advertising. I, I can kind of get. I mean, like this movie kind of fell by the wayside. It felt like you know that a lot of people hadn't seen it. Uh, I think there was like a danger at one point that they were losing the prints or something. And then I remember the Anchor Bay version, which mm -hmm. Michaela also was kind enough to bring in. We've got the DVD set in front of us, which has a better cover. It's not great, but at least it's, it's better, a better, yeah. artwork better yeah. and a little more representative of the movie that you're mm -hmm. going to get. But it's like, okay, how do we get this movie sold to you know everybody's rabid about? About vampires in the post Twilight era, so we're going to put Near Dark out <laughs> and it's, hope to snare them that way. It's funny that you guys bring up Twilight because Platinum Dunes had the licensing to do a remake, and they were going to um, Near Dark, yeah, in yeah. 2006, mm -hmm. and they didn't because Twilight was gaining a lot of steam, and the movie was going to come out, and they f felt like it would get like lost in the shuffle sure. and be too similar. But apparently they don't hold to that when it comes to marketing the DVD cover of the movie. Then no. they're like, hey, let's take advantage of the Twilight yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. weird that we didn't get a remake, but we'll just re-Photoshop our cover instead. Mm -hmm. And this is why so many of these uh, discs end up at the used uh, yeah. <laughs> secondhand stores. Yeah, exactly. Everybody's yeah. like, what the hell? This is not Twilight? Yeah. Honestly, if I saw this on the shelf and I did not know anything about this movie, I'd be like, this looks like shit. Yeah, like, I would buy movie. that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the the film I mean, like itself, Bill Paxton was doing some shit movies yeah. in the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the film itself is uh, like how would we describe this? It's like a western, mm -hmm. yeah, deconstructionist or just revisionist vampire movie. I don't even think it's that. I think no. it's literally like I think it was like written as a western first, and then they just switched some things around to make them vampires. Because like you could really take the vampire element out of this and still have a pretty similar movie. I think overall, right? Because the western was dead at mm -hmm. this point. Nobody wanted westerns, so I, they probably uh, to change that from that. I mean, you know, vampires. It's always mm -hmm. a good way to go, especially with Lost Boys having just come out and everything. And mm -hmm. what was a popularity at the time? Lost Boys up, down, what? Uh, Lost Boys was, I mean, at least in my circle, it was, everybody knew that it, about it. I was gonna say, did it start? Fewer people knew about Near Dark. <laughs> I, you know, sure, I, I can see that. Yeah, the 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 poster art that was Bill Paxton like covered in the spaghetti or whatever. You know? <laughs> yeah, that mm -hmm. one, that image I remember, but I think it was gory and it turned people off. Mm -hmm. But the it has a pedigree. I guess the writer is a guy named Eric Red, who in 1986, the year before this, had written a movie called The Hitcher. 
right? Ah. And to me, like, there's a stylistic uh, kind of crossover between The Hitcher and Near Dark, even though it's not directed by, you know, the, mm-hmm. you know he didn't direct either movies, but he's got this kind of southwestern, it's not like a noir. It is like, a, you know, like these kind the of. The lighting kind of is. I get the mm-hmm. I get the feeling of it a little bit, yeah. It doesn't feel it doesn't feel like a western per se. Like it doesn't feel There's as, a guy uh, it's mostly a, a night horse with a cowboy hat on it at the end of the movie. They have a shootout, sure. a shoot, quote unquote shootout. <laughs> yeah, there's, like there's, high noon, sh- high midnight several, shootout. Yeah, there's several moments in this movie where I'm like, she must love westerns. Like mm-hmm. that's the only explanation for this movie. Right, I mean, I'm talking look wise though because right? it doesn't. I mean, that's what we're, yeah, basically, yeah. it is a group of outlaws. Mm-hmm. Like it fits in. It fits in the. It would fit in that western mold very easily. And I guess the Western and the vampires kind of. I thought it looked like it. There was a lot of like you know on the road shots. I'm talking about mostly maybe like color wise or feeling wise. Again, that's wasn't yellow enough it for white. you. It wasn't like that orange enough like Western feel to it. Mm-hmm. it it's at good. night. It's harsh. Yeah, harsh say, lines in the lighting. A lot it of felt, it's because it's at night. Well, yeah, but mm-hmm. I mean, I guess that lends itself a more to that Western. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And with some midnight cowboy, cowboys in it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, I don't know. <laughs> I definitely got some Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes too. Like the whole vampire family riding around in this van in the middle of nowhere, picking up hitchhiking and picking up hitchhikers and stuff, you know? Yeah. I think I said this on the Lost Boys episode too, but like both these movies, it's one the first time I thought, you know, just as a as a viewer, that you could like smell these people. Oh, yeah. for sure. <laughs> you know, because there's always like they they just seem to be like always, you know, getting shot at or burned. I, you know, the, the sense of the sun light, mm-hmm. you know, burning yeah. them and crisping them. And, you know, it just seems like they always stink. They're and either covered in ever, other people's blood. Nobody or, you know, in this movie like cleans up. They never I wipe anything off. Would, no. if their Even the people covered, that aren't vampires, yeah. they never clean up. Yeah. Like how often do you think they do laundry? Never. Just taking from other people. Just taking clothes from other people. I was people. thinking that when she shows up at the farm at the end, she's wearing the exact same jeans she's been wearing the whole goddamn movie. Bill Paxton's been oh, wearing that jacket tatter. for since the fifties, probably yeah, right. Yeah. Like yeah. he definitely and became a greaser that, in the fifties and just never took that jacket and off. Now it's got that worn in leather sweat smell. To yeah. It. Oh, oh god. Yeah. Ooh, it has slick parts and like the creases. Yeah. Oh, it's just like oh god. look, it's discolored right here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're saying it scores points in the atmosphere. Atmosphere. And it's crusty. Yeah, it is very crusty. Movie. True. We have to have just a one word description of these movies now. Just like this movie feels crusty. crusty. Mm. You know, and you know, like you're dirty when like Lance Henriksen is one of the cleanest people in the movie. Oh he my was. God. Like, he really was. Right? He was always like way cleaner than everybody yeah, else. He wasn't really covered in much at any point in this movie. Yeah. They were just uh, lighting does his eyeballs you, for most of it. Does that mean he's the oldest? Yeah. I think he's the most experienced. So he's I think cleanest. you're supposed to get that I think so. sense, you yeah. know? He's, He's like the leader. patriarch. There's also like a family unit, again, shared with the yeah. Lost Boys, where, you know, there is like a, it's kind of like a subversion of the nuclear family. Yeah. Where Lance Henriksen would be the patriarch, mm-hmm. right? Janet, Jeanette Goldstein, the, the mother figure, and then of uh, the kids, right? Yeah. 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 The, the older, older brother and the younger brother always yeah. fighting with each other, calling oh each other God. names yes. and what have you. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. like they get along, but they don't get along. They've yeah. just been hanging out because they share this affliction for mm-hmm. so long. Yeah. And I assume it's <laughs> like, uh, you know, uh, Jesse, the you know, Lance Henriksen character, turned Diamondback, mm-hmm. who turned Severin, who turned the kid? Uh, uh, Homer and Homer turned. Uh, I mean, May. maybe Jeanette Goldstein turned the kid. Maybe that would make more sense. Yeah, I think that would make yeah. more sense. Yeah, she wanted and then, a kid. Then the kid turned May. May, yes. you're right. And May turned. <laughs> Enter Stephanie Meyer, the plot of Twilight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two vampires start making vampire kids. <laughs> yeah, I like. I was telling yeah. Talon off, Mike. I feel like she took a lot of things from this movie. Yeah, like, I agree. I was like, that's that's a really specific thing. Mm-hmm. Like towards the end of the movie, when Bill Paxton is pulling the parts out of the car engine, that happens in Twilight. Like there is like, I hate that I know this, but I was gonna like, say, how do you know this? <laughs> because I Michaela? was a high school girl at one point in time. <laughs> I've seen. Those ah, weren't movies. we all? It was yeah. a thing. Colin was also a high school girl. Yeah, yeah. wanted to see him. It was a culture. You had yeah. to see them, did you? I mean, curiosity I I, takes over, man. I actually think I did see them all. I yeah. did. I think I remember you I saying I saw the so. first one before it was like, it seemed like that kind of, it grew to like be a big, you know, deal. It right? did. The, the production was, value went up. I'll yeah. give it that. It went up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The first yeah. one was like middling and then they all went downhill from there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's, the there's a part the where a vampire character <laughs> takes parts out of a car engine so someone can't get away. So. Makes sense. 
I yeah. I was like, that's a specific thing to have your character do. Yeah. You know. This is a vampire movie where they go out of their way to never mention the V word. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with it. I like it better that yeah, way. Why do you have to? Well, that's but you're intentionally going out of your way to do it. This is a this is like a statement, right? Yeah. Because not only that, and that's why I say it's revisionist. Do they, do they because, not want to lessen, like, lessen the movie by calling them vampires? I mean, they're obviously vampires. They're mm-hmm. not trying to hide that fact, but but no fangs. Yeah, and yeah, no fangs. No none of that. Well, uh, yeah, you know, they're not European. They have, I mean, it's the it's eighties capes. It's it's uh, dusters and leather jackets. Ponchos. And exactly. Those are yeah. the capes. <laughs> yeah, of the eighties dusters vampire. and trench Long coats. jackets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They strip basically. I mean, what do they keep in the vampire myth? Sunlight is fatal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nope. Uh, uh, sunlight. Yeah. Um, also sunlight. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Being bitten and not drained turns you into vampire. Yeah. Fire mm-hmm. can kill you. Fire. Super strength. Mm-hmm. Thirst yep. for blood. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And basically, so they're getting rid of the entire religious component. We didn't come across like any garlic. We don't know the, about that. No. Mm-hmm. Right. Crosses yeah. seem to be okay based no on the revolver. <laughs> no shape shifting. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's turning into bats or wolves or anything. So these are diseased people in some way that live forever. Heroin addicts? Analogy? I, I kind of thought that because of the, the styling of Bill Paxton's character. I thought that might have, like, because he looks very, like, Sid Vicious in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was like, that has to be a choice. That's not a coincidence. Yeah. And they keep going with that theme when the cop uh, stops. What's his name? Which main character? Caleb. 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 When, they, when the cop stops Caleb, the cop from Cuffs stops Caleb <laughs> <laughs> and questions him and shows him his badge. He's like, what do you want, boy? Yeah. And all that. So that's like, he thinks he's on drugs as well. So that's, yeah, like, it's kind of like a theme espe- for them. Especially May's character. She just seems very strung out all mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very much or so. She just dropped. Uh, mm-hmm. She was on ecstasy. Like she's, she's just like, like an innocent. You can hear the nine. Listen, <laughs> yeah. it's deafening. <laughs> yeah, there was another thing though. They so kept funny. the animals can sense va- like there's oh, something yeah. not right with vampires because oh, we yeah. saw a horse in the beginning that was like terrified of her. Yeah, yep, yeah, mm-hmm. horses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I forgot where where we were going with this. The uh, yeah by 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 taking the uh, the vampire myth and deconstructing it right and bringing it down to like we're all. Uh, this era's vampire movies were they all like an analogy for or a metaphor for like addiction addiction or disease yeah because they're grinding feels like it a lot of them go ahead no, go on. No, you're fine. say a lot of them especially in the 80s were like metaphors for the AIDS crisis yeah. that's exactly what I was there you go. They were going See, psychic was, connection <laughs> again yeah you got the thing there was a lot of disease and addiction going on in the 80s exactly I mean, to reflect the times they exactly. would write about this stuff and just find a different analogy for it vampires kind of fits that perfectly so yeah it came up a lot. So I'm wondering if the AIDS thing came later. I mean, when you look at, like, Fright Night, see, I'm, well, I'm not really, that's like, is it a sexually transmitted disease, kind of? More so than this, right? AIDS? This is uh, <laughs> <What>? vampirism. <laughs> vampirism. I was like, We have yes. to distinguish between AIDS and vampirism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which Which are we the metaphor of? for, yeah, yeah, in the films. Mm-hmm. So is it, because I remember in the 90s, like, they went really hardcore with the idea of, like, you know, Vamp- vampire movies in the 90s were straight up, uh, you know, heroin chic. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, yeah. that was the blade and the addiction. There was a movie called, you know, yeah. and all that stuff yeah. where they were doing the uh, direct metaphor, I think, for drug addicted folks mm-hmm. and the grime and the nastiness. And that, that came across. That that's, that's still coming across. That came across recently in um, Only Lovers Left Alive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. Did you ever see oh, that? Yeah. I did. It was good. It is good. You should check it out. I have it. If you guys want to watch it. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys notice that May mentioned like something about being from the town of Sweetwater early on in this movie? Yeah. And I was like, wait, is this just like your fill in the blank western town name? Because mm-hmm. like that's what it, the t- name of the town is in Westworld. Sweetwater. Yeah, so I was like, is this that's just a good mad line. lib? That's a good line. Yeah. I'm from Sweetwater. Yeah. Isn't that the name of the band in Almost Famous? Don't know. Listen, no. I feel like I've seen completely different movies than you guys. I, I like, don't, I don't know well cops. enough. I'm like, huh? It's the cop from Halloween Five. For God's sake, it is. Sake. It is yeah. the cop from Halloween Five. <laughs> like, where is He's the cop from like Ridge? five movies? <laughs> Sean and I have a cuffs uh, connection. I, I like so. cuffs. I believe my first time on the freak show, I had, a, I went off on a tangent about cuffs. Uh, I'm still. Uh, <laughs> Five years later, I'm still going after. And it was Sweetwater, and almost yeah, famous. I think so. Yeah. Right. One, one good, of the bands, yeah. Not the band, but one of them. Yeah. 
Um, so the movie's about a young fellow named Caleb who uh, has a fancy for a girl named May, mm-hmm. who ends up biting him. A creepy fancy. He's very uh, he's very forward. He's a he's borderline. I could say forceful. He's yeah. borderline he's, date rapey. Yeah, yeah. Like, he is, especially yeah. at the point yeah. where he's just like, "I'll I'm take not, you home. You yeah. come give me a you kiss. kiss me. What the like, fuck, dude? Yeah. Take her home." Yeah, it's a little bit like, all right, calm down, dude. Even yeah. I'm getting the creepy vibes from yeah. this guy. It's like, mm-hmm. all right, back off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a bit much. It's cowboy flirtation. <laughs> I think oh, it's I a know. lack of understanding <laughs> consent. I, I think so, yeah, and boundaries <laughs> yeah. and, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. For a woman, we're out in the middle of nowhere. For a woman constantly wanting to go. folks of live in, you know, Oklahoma. Oh, no, we don't think this of all of you. Just <laughs> Caleb. <laughs> Just Caleb. For a woman who keeps saying she Caleb wants to go specific. home, he's, also, he's very... Uh, <laughs> Not listening to her. A lot of, you know, yeah. down home farmer boys are very charming. <laughs> very nice. He thinks this he is. This is just Caleb. He this thinks he is, is but he's not. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. Nathan Petrelli's a creep. Yeah. Imagine that. <laughs> That's the through line in this actor's career, right? Yeah. Yeah. Suave, creepy man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he ends up getting uh, more than he bargained for when she gives him uh, a hickey that festers and becomes this black, nasty thing on his neck no he's ad- abducted by her uh family so we meet basically as after these. he's uh, steaming through the open fields of during the daylight <laughs> he's abducted by rv vampires i'm amazed at how <laughs> fast this kicks in me too that's what i was surprised that's what I like I'm about like, it. it's really quick i I'm thought good. you were gonna say how fast that rv was going that's what I, said. <laughs> I honestly thought that too because it was going over like an empty cornfield it was going too really fast it was off-roading yeah. and going really well, fast they got that thing outfitted they got you know the uh, windows all blacked out and apparently it's they not did good enough it. it's got vampire suspension <laughs> The vampire bikes on the back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think well, they. Did, I don't think they did kid. anything to it. I think they just stole it. That well, because they their... ditched it super quickly, yeah. and they're like, quick. "Fuck it, we'll find another." And they did that yeah. multiple times. Mm-hmm. So I don't think they had it. Very so long. this yeah. is the lifestyle, right, of the uh, the non magical vampire or the limited magical vampire. You just kind of on the road. You're a nomad. You're, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just wandering around the American South. Because if you're gonna kill people and drink their blood the way these people kill people and drink their blood, you have to move a lot. And you have to go to, like, not very populated places. Right. Like, they could not go to the bar from Roadhouse because there's way too many people there. Mm-hmm. So they got to find, like, a divier bar where there's, like, six See, people w- in it. Yeah. I'd like to watch that scene. Oh, I The would bar too. scene, but have it be the bar from Roadhouse. Have Dalton walk in and be like, what's going <laughs> yeah. on here? That'd be a much more fun scene. They just mm-hmm. tear ass through it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. I'm sure there's a movie called Vampire Roadhouse out there somewhere. Oh, God, Probably. please let there be. Vampire Roadhouse. If not, we're making it, right? I mean, Vampire Roadhouse. 2017 Saturday Night Freak Show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, Patrick Swayze, rest in peace. This movie and is- Bill Paxton, they can't and fight each other. God damn it. All right, I retire. I retire. What? Oh, it's a bingo square. It's a bingo square. I retire this uh, idea for we cannot have it live up to its true potential because. Our stars are gone. Yeah. Unfortunately. God rest their souls. But mm-hmm. their lights will shine forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, Moving on. <laughs> uh, I've always thought that this movie hinges on two big major scenes. It seems like anybody who's seen the movie remembers. Mm-hmm. There's a scene in a bar and a scene in a motel. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, where they basically go into this bar and decimate everybody who's there, including James Legros. From Point Break and Drugstore Cowboy. No, okay. Didn't. Nope. Didn't. Didn't recognize him. <laughs> Colin is a man unto himself. Yep. yep. <clears throat> so, <laughs> but here's the thing about we were talking about there. You know, they're living on the road. They're drinking blood every night. Uh, there's few vampire movies that actually give you, at least to me, a physical like discomfort in watching them drink someone's blood. Because Bill Paxton bites this biker dude, and then like as he's coming away from him, he burps and belches up like yeah, all this. That's gross. Like, really, and it's like, gross. Ugh, ugh. I could smell that. Like when yeah, he did yeah, that, I was yeah. like, ugh. that was gross. That's so <laughs> yeah, gross. yeah. Like I could smell your breath, dude, yeah. from here. Ugh, yeah, this ugh. is the opposite of making vampires sexy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Oof. That's, but I appreciate that because I feel like sure. they are like vampires, especially now, like in this year and. You know, the late early 2000s are like fetishized almost with how much they are romanticized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah they're not the, sexy creatures. Yeah. Right. We've gotten away from this idea, right? That they're predators. Right? Yeah. And vampires are these nasty, awful things that run around at night. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's because anybody, any you. idea that anybody does, they always do like the man vampire preying on the woman. Like that's I'm, I'm that I'm, that's probably why we've gotten away from the whole predator aspect of it because I don't know maybe that's not working for people anymore. 
Hmm. Especially, I mean, maybe for maybe for women as well. I don't right. know. I could be wrong, but well, and that's you're absolutely right about that because that's what made Twilight so appealing to many people was because he wanted to like his instinct was to prey on her, but he resisted it, and it yeah. was like so romantic that like he could kill her, but he's choosing not to. <laughs> that's like, so yeah, that's it's, romance. Yeah, I yeah, could kill yeah. you right now, yeah. so but, just, but I'm not gonna. Yeah. So he just followed her around. I, yeah, and yeah so her he said he just stalked her. That's yeah, fine. my lizard brain is telling me I need to kill you more than anything, but yes. I my logical <laughs> human brain is uh-huh. saying don't do it. Yes. Oh, those movies are disgusting on so many levels. <laughs> oh, yeah. We could do several episodes. Oh, we could, honestly, we could do a whole podcast on all the problems with those movies and the horrible messages. Well, that's why we have but... to do podcasts about how movies like Near Dark get it right. Yeah. Exactly. If it's Near Dark or Twilight. So we're not going to ruin how our reviews are going to go. But if it's Near Dark or Twilight, it's Near Dark, right? Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I think that goes on. I mean, you can put that up pretty you know? much against anything. Mm hmm. Near Dark or Mean Guns, Colin, which do you... Or uh, Twilight or Mean Guns, which do you pick? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough What was the other movie? What's the worst movie we've watched? What we... we what is it? Metal Storm. Metal Storm. <laughs> all right. All right. So Twilight or Metal Storm? Metal I will say, Storm. I will say Twilight is more watchable. Twilight. I'd rather that doesn't make Twilight. it better, but it's more watchable. Yeah. Metal Storm. But, I, haven't I, mean, seen, I haven't seen Ball. Yeah. I have not seen Twilight, so I can't really. I mean, there's a reason that meme like better. It's a better I would rather have a Twilight, Twilight marathon on. than watch Metal Storm. Mm. Yeah. Ball. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Everybody, we're going to chase everybody away here. They're going to want to yeah. go watch Twilight. Uh, like, we came to hear about Near Dark. Sorry. What do you guys sorry. like about this film? Who said I like this film? Well, I mean, oh, what, what do I like saying? about it? Like it? <laughs> it's very true. Um, don't look at me. I'm not. I'm not I'm, I, I mean, I love westerns and I love horror movies. So this is like my two favorite things coming together. I love. I love Bill Paxton. Bill Paxton's chewing the fuck out of the scenery in this movie, literally and figuratively. Very much. Uh, he but likes a part where he can just uh, yammer. I love it feels. though. Like I want more. And be crazy. Yeah. It's like yeah, he does it well. A lot of it feels like he's ad libbing it. I don't know. I haven't read the scripts. So mm-hmm. I don't know. But mm-hmm. I mean, a lot of that stuff in the bar feels ad libbed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then a lot of their lines kind of feel, you know, I mean, they're very uh, colorful, but also they feel very, you know, Southwestern. Lance yeah. Henriksen's a very intense fellow. Very. Mm-hmm. I love it when they light him and his eyes stand out. I mean, his eyes stand out no matter what, but there's one scene where he's standing up against the wall in the bar and he's got that underlighting, mm-hmm. which is hitting his features and then just his fucking intense eyes are staring at me. Mm-hmm. Well, especially because, like, like, his. His role in this movie is not incredibly physical. He just no. does a lot of standing and staring. You know, yeah. that's a lot of it, but it it works for him. You know, yeah. it's very so. much like I've seen some things. Yeah, you know, like he just stands off and watches. Yeah, because he's supposed yeah. to be like a Confederate soldier. Right. right? Yeah, it's like still wandering around. Which is mm-hmm. probably the best line in the movie when he says, "How old are you?" Yeah, <laughs> I fought for the South. <laughs> that's a good line. Uh-huh. Let's just say I fought for the South. He we lost. A story at conventions, Lance Henriksen does about uh, like getting into character for this role, mm-hmm. and the you know the murderous intent mm-hmm. of uh, Jesse. And I guess I think he could said he go out he and murder with, his brother from the north. Yeah, he was with <laughs> Bill Paxton, and they were driving around. They got pulled over by a cop. And the cop comes up to the door, and he said he was like you know so in the headspace. That, you know, the cop's like, you know, he's staring this cop down and just he's being Jesse. And Bill Paxton was like, dude, dude, like we should probably knock it off. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> Get out of character. <laughs> yeah. They, they all, I also heard, too, that like because this movie was basically filmed in the middle of nowhere all the time, that like when the cast had time between shoots, they would just like drive to the nearest like small town close by and like just walk around and hang out a lot of times in costume. Sure. And I was like, so while they were making this movie, they were also kind of living it at the same time because yeah. they're just traveling around to small towns just yeah. to find something to do. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've heard uh, I've heard Jeanette Goldstein talk about the time she had on making this movie. And she said it was one of the like one of the best times she's had because it was like a little a little camp that all these people got to go to, especially having worked with them on Aliens before mm. this. And then they all went off into the, you know, into the desert, basically, to shoot this and just living in those close quarters for that yeah. whole time. And she they're said, basically living the, the, the movie, right? Mm-hmm. They're living yeah. that life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like these vagabonds just kind of, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, gypsies traveling around. Mm-hmm. I wonder if Lance Henderson, if he was being a Confederate soldier, I wonder if he was bad at the start 
or like how or if he turned into a bad person later on being turned into a vampire like i wonder if there was a transition or if he was just always like a bad guy from the very start like i want to know that history and like when the turn came and when he decided to just you know fucking murder people well this is i guess you know um how can you be a nice vampire and have to kill people is yeah what i'm asking yeah. like at what point but that's the thing right like it's either the, the mythology there seems to be that once you're bitten and you become a vampire like you're possessed by some kind of evil force right, right? so it's you, evil you, there's like a desire a to kill kinda, that you yeah. cannot override right, right? Through no f- force of will of your own. It's just you have to do this. Where, uh, you know, th- this movie and Lost Boys, you know, are kind of sitting there going like, well, you know, you've it doesn't just because you've been bit doesn't override the moral character that mm-hmm. you have within. You have to make a decision that I'm going to kill people. So at some point, Jesse had to, you know. Maybe he was chosen to be a vampire because, you know, by whoever made him because, you know, he was a good killer or had, you know, was remorseless in that fact, which kind of makes like, you know, I get that, you know, Jesse's a killer, uh, Diamondback's a killer, uh, Severin and Homer, May's a killer, like a straight up killer too, Mm -hmm. you know? She doesn't seem to have like any kind of moral compunction. No. She says she's been doing this for four years. She's a young vampire, I guess. And then she turns Caleb, and this is the whole dramatic arc of the movie, is like, is Caleb going to make his first kill and become a vampire like the rest of them? And then he has these kind of, the dynamic then becomes him trying to escape from these people. And at the same time, time trying to find like a uh, connection with them, you know, like he wants to get away from them and hang out with them at like the same time or they're at odds with each other. Yes. Which kind of makes it an interesting dynamic, right? Mm-hmm. This comes to a head when like his uh, parents or I guess his father his and father sister and who sister are looking for him. Up. Uh, yeah. When they show up, then it becomes like a test of, you know, like where, where, who, where do your allegiances lie and where are you going to go? Yeah. Yeah. I really love that scene before we find out that his dad and sister are at the hotel when they're just like hanging out in the hotel, just like entertaining themselves and they're playing poker and they both draw the guns at each other and they start <laughs> yeah. laughing. I loved that scene. Yeah. I want to see more of them just like yeah. shooting the shit, hanging out. I want you know? to see them shooting each other in a po- poker game. Yeah. Like, you know, right. Spitting the bullets back. Up <laughs> yeah. and maybe that's what I wanted more from that, like the family dynamic. Maybe I wanted more. I, I think I wanted more from that whole thing with them. Because Mm -hmm. I get that there's, you see little bits of it like that, and it's just like, that's cool, that's fun. Uh I want to see people who have been with each other for like 400 years. Right. I want to see those dynamics play out. Mm -hmm. I don't think I got what I wanted out of that for these people. I I see that they, and maybe that's, you know, you're limited on time and budget and what have you, this being... um, one of the earlier movies for her. Um, but I think, I think for me that was missing from that family. I want more from them. I think it'd be more fun for them to, for those characters to have that in there. I think that was missing just a little bit. Yeah. I just want show flashes of it Mm -hmm. every now and again, which is cool, which is fun. Just want more. There seemed to be like a couple things that were missing. I don't know if this movie was like trimmed for the MPAA. It seemed like they were cutting feels away like from it. Feels like, like there's yeah edges that are missing to this movie. Yeah, like I know they shot the when Severance uh, cuts the bartender's throat with his mm-hmm. uh, spurs. Yeah, like clearly that's a that is a shot that the makeup guy set up. Oh yeah, that they cut away from the bartender or the waitress getting her throat cut. They mm-hmm. cut to Homer. Mm-hmm. He's the dog. You yeah, know, in that yeah. Shot. yeah, yeah, like, yeah. 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 He's the this. dog. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because <laughs> we don't have Indeed. anything else to cut to. We'll cut yeah. to Homer. No, it feels like there should have been a spray at that point of something. Yeah. So it's light on gore. Light? Is it? It's. Mm. I don't know because, like we were saying, everyone's stuff. like crusty and burned through and like bloody through this whole movie. You know, even when, yeah. but even when like Bill Paxton gets nailed with the semi, you get that little. It feels like almost a flash of him coming up onto the. Uh, the roof of the semi with, as the famous image shows, like half of him is all bloodied and missing and everything. It's awesome. But I don't mm-hmm. think, we don't get, it is, I like that, mm-hmm. I love that image and I wish we could, it didn't feel like we saw enough of that in this. Yeah. It feels like there were, like you said, there's just edges of things that yeah. are missing. Like, we gotta snip a little bit here, we gotta snip a little bit there just to bring it down for the MPAA. Yeah, like there was moment. the moments were there, but for a vampire movie, I thought there'd be way more. I thought so too. Yeah. 
I think it would, this movie would benefit from little mm-hmm. things like that I if they so. could. That stuff could be, yeah. If that stuff could be in there mm-hmm. all the time, mm-hmm. I would. I need a little more gore for this movie. I think mm-hmm. I'd enjoy it more. I think so. Did you guys also like toward the end of the film? Uh, there's. Uh, uh, I mean, it's no surprise now we mentioned it that uh, Caleb is cured of his vampirism, right? Very right. easily. Because of Chekhov's uh, veterinarian father. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yep. This is an ongoing, that's a bingo square. Yeah, uh, yeah it is. Yeah. Chekhov's veterinarian father. <laughs> yeah. Well, just Chekhov's whatever. No, no, no. It's got to be Chekhov's veterinarian <laughs> we father. We also had Chekhov's truck driver, too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, there's like no wasted, you know, anything. In, in yeah, it's the, Chekhov's in object screenplay. is what it's got to be, yeah. Dad's a veterinarian. How are we curing the vampirism at the end through a, a transfusion? Blood transfusion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like you do. So, that's, that's the easiest way hey, I've seen to cure vampirism. It's in, better than the, oh, God, what was, it's better than the Daybreakers method. What do they have to do? Uh, spoilers for Daybreakers. Oh, Doesn't three, matter. Two, one. <laughs> the movie sucks anyway, so you shouldn't watch it. But, <laughs> that's uh, a spoiler. The movie sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Ethan Hawke has to, like, jump into, like, Water and get electrocuted at the same time. It oh, jump starts his I heart. That. Yeah, it jump starts his heart, and then he's cured of his vampirism. Yeah. So I, when I hear Jesus, blood, Jesus, really? Yeah. So when I hear blood transfusion, I'm like, that works for me. That's yeah. fine. It's That's not, yeah. better. I'll take <laughs> yeah. the blood transfusion. That makes sense. Yeah. But it also implies that it's a disease, right? It's not like a yeah. magical thing. Yeah. Like you know, they're not corpses. Although they kind of go back and forth on that because. Once Caleb is restored to life or life, whatever, once he's cured, May comes back and is like, you know, gives him a hug and then like, oh, you're warm. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Yeah. I'm like, what? but her heart's clearly beating. I mean, there's a circulatory circulatory system at work. There's a heat coming off of her body. But that's a vampire so thing. It's yeah, being cold to the touch. Because that- they're dead and there's nothing, there's nothing moving inside. They're just slabs of, you know, that, I feel reanimated like that's, meat. I feel like that's a problem in every vampire movie, not mm-hmm. just this one. Yeah. 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 That, that that's a problem whole- with the mythology yeah. in general. That yeah. whole dead but having flowing blood, like it's, yeah. it makes Feed no sense. Feed off of me. Yeah. So is this mm-hmm. like no an sense. area where we can create our own vampire can we fix mythology? It? Can yeah. we fix it now? Is there like a gap here? Because <laughs> I've often thought about this. No. Maybe this is not the right place to... But like Colin just sits in his base, he's like, mm. <laughs> yeah. I assume that a, an actual like a vampire, vampire is practicalities. There, it's a <laughs> reanimated corpse, right? right? So it's not actually... Like, there's no heart beating and no blood flowing. This is why it's cold as ice. Right. right. It would be like a corpse. This guy would creep you out if you saw him on the right. street. Yes. He would have to hide in shadows so you would think that he's a human, right? Where so does this all is the like blood rock. go that they drink? See, these are vampire biology, right? Yeah, I think that, this, like, so we've got, like, a thing. I say, I say they have no blood in their bodies. But they drink it. I think, but I think it goes away. When they feed, it's like they're filling up the battery. So it, they it, shit yeah. blood? It's, they piss no. blood? No, no, no. It's I think abs- it just... It's absorbed. I, th- I think it's absorbed and then worked out. It's their energy. I think it's... Yeah. Well, that's what I think it is. It's, it's their, their energy, energy yeah. that's worked out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, and I think they, they wear it out, they use it all up, and they have to feed again. <laughs> like a battery. Fills like up the battery. Yeah. I agree. I like this idea. I think that that's the one that makes most sense. Logically, that makes mo- the most sense. So to me. then you could also add to this that if you were to stab a vampire, you puncture its uh, its mm-hmm. sinews and its flesh. Yeah. Then the blood that's inside it. See, this is I think maybe uh, adding a little bit of magical stuff. They want need the blood because the blood is alive. It's living tissue yeah. now inside this like mm-hmm. unholy, you know, reanimated thing, and it wants out. Yeah. Like the thing blood, living blood tries mm-hmm. to get out as you know through whatever. Is the easiest avenue, like and that's this. the cut in it. So that's why vampires bleed. I think so, and bleed heavily. Yeah, because mm-hmm. like, get me out of here. I agree. This is the stuff that they haven't worked off. See, I like this. These are good rules. Where, where are they, where's this movie? I, just, I don't know. We're giving I, it away but for free. I, this is not a good idea. Tw- no, no, this is not free. Like we have <laughs> property of this. We own this. <laughs> Nobody can steal this. <laughs> we'll sue the shit out of them. That's right. We've got this recording. But I like it. this idea. But how do you, like, you have to focus, in order to get those ideas across, I think you have to focus on them if you're going to make a movie about it, like, yeah, and that's not interesting, maybe, right. to, in a film? Yeah. I don't think that's interesting to the viewer. You about a character and not the physiology. Right, because it becomes a movie about the physiology yeah. of vampires. Yeah. And who, unless you make that really interesting, who wants to watch that? Besides, what? like, you and me. Because <laughs> I'll watch that right now. From a macro standpoint, you can make a vampire movie about just... I mean, I think you can. I think somebody has to. <laughs> we'll work it out. All right. I got a question for you as far as direction on this film. Uh, there's a scene at the end uh, where Caleb is cured. 
but we don't know that that's what's happened. Basically, uh, he proposes a blood transfusion. Dad takes him back to the family barn, lays him out on the table, sticks him with a bunch of needles, and then cries over what I think is like Caleb's corpse. And then in the next scene, Caleb is okay. Mm. Did any of you misread that scene as like, oh, shit, he died? No. I didn't. I, no, I don't know. No. <laughs> I mean, I had seen it before. I think so he was I just knew, crying over yeah. his well, like, this was yeah. my first time. Shit, yeah. had, there's some weird shit happening to my son. Uh, that's what I got. I was like, it can't be that simple to kill him. You know what I'm no. saying? I was like, we've seen all the shit they can live through to this point. So and to just like, have him die at that point makes then, no sense yeah, the rest of the movie. Vampire movie, you can come back after death or whatever. Like, that would be the next, you know, like, he, his heart stops and he sits up, you know, or whatever. But this is just, you know, from my first time, sure. I remember watching it. No. So maybe I was just misreading it, but I'm like, I hate it when they do stuff like that in movies. I remember Sleepy Hollow did something too with Christina Ricci where like her character is like, you know, sleeping, but looks all, you know, pallid right, and they're dead. Just like, uh, and everybody's it's like, why are you crossing her arms like that? She's yeah. not dead. And then it's like, she's not dead. And I'm like, why, why am I misreading this? And like, yeah. that is clearly, this is the moment where you're saying that that character is dead. Which I always blame on the director. It's like, sure, yeah. It's like yeah, you staged it, putting it together right. No, I, I never got that. I always thought he'd he'd get through that. I had more of an issue with the transfusion. The fact that that it was it. The, his. Well, no, just the, the practicalities of the transfusion. You only have what, like three pints of blood inside. How much did his dad give him? He's got a bunch of sheep. He gave him sheep blood. Collins is saying because things. How Collins, you, is, <laughs> Collins in the I'm just saying things. How do you flush? Mode. How, how did he flush out all of that well, vampire that's, blood? That's the first thing I was wondering when this happened. I'm yeah. like, shouldn't he get rid of some blood? Shouldn't yeah. there be like a, like, You'd have you know, to flush a circulatory out all that thing vampire going on here? Blood. Like old rock stars yeah. have to like get their blood taken out and get new blood put in every now and again, right? Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that a thing? It's like they've done so much cocaine over the years, mm-hmm. they need new blood. You run into that little right. thing. Right, yeah, in the thing. Yeah, and then it's just rocking the blood and just it all circulates it through. back in. Right, he's got to get rid of some before yeah. he gets some new blood, yeah. is what like, I was thinking. Yeah, we should have seen that, like, if this movie had been set in the city and not in the country, we would have gotten an awesome scene of him going to, like, a plasma donation center and, like, have some sassy black nurse being like, what, what's going on here kind of thing. That's yeah. how it would have gone down if this movie had been set not in the middle of nowhere. But, I think like, I got the comedy that. version? Yeah. yeah, there was some there was some weird comedy in this movie. Like I think a lot of it came from like we were talking about Bill Paxton probably improvising. Like yeah. the finger looking good was so out of step with the rest of the movie that I was like that had to be improvised. There's yeah. no way that that was in the script. Yeah, we're gonna find out. It's Eric Red, mm-hmm. is that you or is that Bill Paxton? We're gonna track this down. You know, Eric Red killed a guy. What? Say what I think he killed actually like five people. What? Oh, all right, story. So, uh, this is years after. It'd be great if you're like, that's all I know about it. I believe that he is now in, uh, like, you know, uh, uh, he's not in prison. No, he got off. Um, he. It's terrifying. Yeah. He, well, okay. He ran his car into a restaurant and killed, uh, several people in the restaurant. When they, well, when they found him, uh, he was disoriented, but I don't think he was on anything. He was like depressed and like wanted to end it all, and you know drove his car into a. a Why take other people out with you though, right, man? Yeah. yeah, but like somehow he was able to. So I don't know if I'm describing this correctly, but I remember hearing it at the time. There was like a story about like basically, you know, he broke up with somebody, was depressed, drove his car to you know to kill himself, killed other people. Then he was all depressed, and I think. When, <laughs> When he uh, he's uber Christ. depressed, he said something to this fact to the arresting officer, you know, hmm. that that gave them the idea that he knew what he was doing, but somehow got off. And I think he wrote uh, a couple of movies afterwards. A hundred feet with was that Carrie? What's her name from uh, the Matrix? Trinity. Trinity from the Matrix. The yeah. Matrix, Carrie Moss. <laughs> Carrie Ann Moss okay. was in like I think a hundred feet. What is a hundred feet? She's got like a. I believe she's got one of those, you know, um, bracelets on your ankle, ankle bracelets. Uh, so you oh, like a home gotcha. monitor thing. Legal yeah. than a hundred feet of your house, and the house is haunted by her ex-husband. <laughs> oh, it started off interesting, and uh, then it just didn't. Fall. Yeah, there's possibilities. Yeah, in that. and then you said haunted by her ex-husband. Like, oh, I would say home, inv- home invasion would be a better way to go. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah. But he keeps leaving when the cops come, so they're just like, no, I promise he was here. Yeah. He's like, ma'am, you cannot break your parole again or your house arrest. Uh, you will go back yeah. to jail. Yeah, let's copyright this. Let's make this movie. Yeah. 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 I haven't seen it. 
so I can't talk anymore about it. All right. mm-hmm. Did you get? Did you guys like? I feel like everyone forgets that Matthew Broderick killed two people in a car accident once. Yes, yeah. he did. In yes, Ireland, did. him Sarah Jessica yeah. Parker was in the car with him. Oh. They they swerved into oncoming traffic and another car had on and killed two people. Damn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't know. That. Yeah, that gets swept under the rug a lot. I mean, <laughs> it's Matthew Broderick, isn't? National He's treasure. a shell of a human at this point, anyway. <laughs> oh, <probably>. So, <laughs> was that recently? Like within what 10, 15 probably years? Probably within the past ten years. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Hmm. So maybe he's also in actor jail. And just sort of like we won't cast Matthew Broderick. No, he's, so. st- he's still mm-hmm. working. He's still doing yeah. things. Yeah. There's a Broadway yeah. somewhere other going on. <clears throat> he's doing all right. He's got that Sarah Jessica money coming in. Mm-hmm. He's fine. <laughs> He does. Well, that Sex in the City money? Hells yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hells yeah. Yeah, that divorced money is coming in. Mm-hmm. But the show, I mean, not, <laughs> not that he got divorced from her. But. Right. Well, Caleb is cured, and then the vampires show back up. Seems very easy that he gets cured. Yeah. See, okay, we got to get past right. that, though. He is. I can't, right, I can't, cured. Colin. I can't. <laughs> Do, well, but then I have questions. Cures like, would the, would the other vampires ever want to be cured? Like, are they they like this? They've yeah. got so accustomed to this I was, lifestyle. I was thinking they're down with it. I was thinking that when when he cured her at the end. I was like, did, yeah. he, did he ask her? <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. It's like, hey, no, I liked this. Yeah. I, I liked don't my die. vampire life. Unless, in the beginning, when she was talking about the stars and how they have billions of years, and she's like, and I'll still be here. Yeah. Unless he took that as being like, like this sucks, very, I'm being, trapped. Being very mel- yeah. melancholy about yeah. it. Just like, huh. Yeah. Well, but, she does make a, I mean, the only thing that would like contribute to that, you know, like, because obviously this is like a love story, right? Where they are in love despite their differences being on both other sides of the track. meeting one night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But like she I wants him that, basically okay. to, as someone to snuggle up with when she sleeps, because that's basically his role once he becomes like a vampire, right? Is like her mm-hmm. pillow. And then <laughs> essentially. <laughs> right. But then, Basically. you know, when he leaves them, because he doesn't, he wants to stay with her. He leaves them to go with his uh, parents or his father and sister when an opportunity arises. And then, it seems rather quick that he does that. Like well, he seemed yeah. all in for the family and have being with them and everything. And then, but it was the opportunity. It but just, just the like, opportunity, and just like gone. Yeah, yeah. Seemed for like a very quick decision. Well, yeah, he's gonna to go he's off. He's gonna go with you know his dad and sister. He's going to die to in the daylight. Safe. I he's gonna so. yeah take yeah. them. I mean, I those people are really crusty. I'd rather be with my family too. Just hang out but at he night. Realizes you know? that inside himself, he's a vampire, right? He just hasn't. That's why he wants to stay with them, right? Ugh, they're just like, awful. He, he feels resigned to it more than he wants to. He wants to be with her. Mm-hmm. But she wants to be with him, which is why they come back. I assume you figure it's for like a revenge thing, right? They're gonna come back. Well, everybody's scared. got their reasons, and all those reasons move them back towards him. Yeah. They don't have to be the same. They're just, we want to go back to him. She loves him and they want to take his head off. But he, because she uh, saves his sister. So this is like her selfless act that redeems like a lifetime of murder, right? Or at least four years of murder. She sacrifices herself because I assume she thinks that she's going to burn up in the sunlight. Like the rest of the vampires. I mean, yeah, she went back. She's, she's got to feel that for the fact that she jumps out the back window with the sister. Yeah. So maybe that's what gives him license to cure her. I mean, it, I it, I'm sure that's... it helps him. <laughs> like she's like, oh, she was willing to. She put her. She sacrificed her life to save my sister. At this point. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I guess he can see that. Nobody seems to be thinking too far ahead in this movie. <laughs> Which is future why, is not on their mind. But this, they don't have to care, though. Like, I, that's they very have true. eternity. They don't have to give a shit that's about anything true. except what they want they to do in, right now. They live in the moment, man. Yeah. 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 I guess when after they're cured, then yeah. like, you're mortal again. And this kind of opens up. An interesting. I want the movie where she gets hit by a car the next day. I don't know why. (laughs) That's that's what I want. Oh, my first day is immortal. Oh, what's it? What is? Is that? What do you call that? A (laughs) bus? Or like she's like going out enjoying the sun for the first time forever without getting burned. She's like, yeah, you didn't see it coming. She's blinded by the sun. Or she just stares into the sun. She's like, ah, I've never been able to do this before. She's like, no, you're not supposed to look at it. (laughs) They kind of did that in the movie uh, City of Angels. Nicolas Cage and Meg Ryan. He was an angel, and he becomes sorry. Spoiler: He becomes human. Right. And Just, I, the I, I remember. I remember it's, about and that. She dies. It's so sad. She dies the next day. I know. 
Don't remind me. <laughs> spoilers. There's also yeah. Dennis Rodman naked spoiler. in the ocean, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. But what's the the flip side of that is that he dies the next day, and then because this is like, where yeah. does this live? Her. She's been off the grid for at least four years. Can't go back to whatever family that she had, assuming that she hasn't killed her parents or the family didn't kill her parents. Yeah. Uh, she's now. Who knows how wanted she is? She's killed how many fucking people? Like, how do you explain? Yes. Like, well, you know, I used to be a vampire once. I have this weird behavior because I used to be a vampire once. I mean, you can cover that up. I've got no, an answer. You, no, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. You say you just escaped David Koresh's cult. There it is. Those kids don't have birth certificates or social security numbers. They have. They're. They were born completely off yeah, the grid. This is a good exist. idea for a movie. <laughs> but there's like a girl who shows up and like she gets the fingerprinter, find out that she was somebody. Says she she was kidnapped by a cult. Mm-hmm. Turns out that she actually became a vampire for a while. Then she was cured by Ooh. this farmhand who got killed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she's a, a former vampire. A former vampire. Ooh. Ooh. Right? I like, that. I like this idea. Is there, a, she has to readjust. is there a support group for recovering vampires? Oh my god, this right? sounds like an awesome horror comedy that would be really... Uh, James Gunn needs <laughs> to get on this right is, now. I'm loving it right now. Yeah. Sean's got excited face. <laughs> His jaw I is love on this the floor. idea. Yeah. I like the support group for former vampires. Yeah, love it. Copyright that shit. Yeah. <laughs> we have to come back and listen to this episode sober <laughs> to remember all these great ideas. Yeah. I really like that idea, though, because that's the whole mundane... That's That is... No, that's the, that, that's, that's the shit I love. That's, that's the, that's shit the I love. what we do in the shadows type. Yeah, exactly. That's mm-hmm. what that could the be. The everyday, mundane, normal life shit. Right. That's that's. Why what do I, love. I feel they all have to be British though? I feel because like they of what do. we do in the shadows. It's like yeah, I yeah. used to butt people on the neck, but now I just I work next to Phil. And oh my god, Phil... you make it like a mockumentary yes, type. Yes, exactly. Oh my god. Exactly. I was gonna say James Gunn would be good to direct this, no, but I, I want a mockumentary, be a mockumentary yeah. type of yeah. thing. Yeah, uh, so, yeah. Taika Waititi, yeah. you're up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're up, buddy. <laughs> so I nibble on Phil every now and again, but he doesn't you ever mind. See Ava's possessions. Oh, I've yes, heard of the it. zombie. No. She, was, she, was, she went to zombie re- recovery. It was for being possessed. Like she possession was, recovery. But that she was doesn't it, yeah. remember. Oh, really? Possession possessed. recovery. And that's everybody's it, that's like, right. You know, you were kind of, you know, like when you were <laughs> like that. Yeah. You know, demon possession around. recovery. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Funny. <laughs> I forgot about that. I like that. <clears throat> Good idea. Yeah. Uh, so that probably brings us close to the end of our talk in Near Dark. Any stray observations? The lovers live. <laughs> Holly brought up a good point. That not, like One of the many issues of the blood, blood transfusion was like, he doesn't know what blood type she is. Right? She doesn't have... She's, she's going to be she's, fucked up for the rest yeah, of her but life. they can type that. Come she, on. She's Tim very Thomas undocumented. Awesome veterinarian. <laughs> no, there's Do no veterinarians way. have to do blood types? I'm sure they know how. Do but he's like he's he did a, it in a okay, barn. He's in a barn. It was in yeah. a barn. Yeah. He's doing blood in a barn. Yeah. This is not. Uh, not a sophisticated very technical, technical he doesn't sophisticated have the equipment, Colin. This is not possible. Sure he's all still all right. right. He's blood still using metal IV do. bags. Yeah, like that is yeah. what is happening right here. Yeah. The metal bag. The metal like bag. That. Yeah, it's still happening. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. yeah well, exactly. what we're going to do here is we're going to get to some <laughs> listener mail. And again, we re- appreciate you writing in because we've got a shit love it when you write this in. year. This, this year? year? This tonight. This we've, had a, we've had a lot this year. That's mm-hmm. right. We, yeah. This is the best year we've had with viewer mail. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. Each and every one of you. Yes. Yeah. Um, you shall remain then, nameless. Then we're going to go around and uh, review the movie. And I'm getting some looks here. So we got we, I'm kind of curious how Near Dark's going to shape up. You never know, right? Until we actually get around to our final wrap up. So we hope you'll stick with us. But before then, we're going to summon our mailman, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Well, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. He's got his little leather jacket on. That's pretty cute. Mm-hmm. It doesn't quite fit him. He's but trying. He's trying. He's trying. Yes. It's like his little sister's leather jacket. Igor, <laughs> did you have a little sister? Oh, God. <laughs> Don't talk about his family. Yeah. Where's your family? Don't do it. <laughs> Bad news. No? Okay. Bye. That poor guy. He I'm didn't seem like he wanted to talk. Complex. Uh, yeah, he's going to hate us all. 
Um, all right, so <laughs> we're gonna get to an episode. Where you're like, this is Igor. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh, just gonna be oh him. Oh my god! You know, we should do an Igor episode. <laughs> Ooh, we should. You know, sometimes I come down here and he is like sitting at one of the mics, and I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? And, it's and like, does he just run away when you interrupt him? He's like, Ugh. it reminds me a lot of you know in Community Troy and Abbott in the morning. It's not an actual morning show. Right. It feels it's like, like there's that. No cameras. Yeah, there's nothing yeah. Going, but he's going still on? going through all the motions. Yeah, yeah he he's does that. Turning sometimes. the knobs. He's like, yeah, Troy and Abbott in the morning. Yeah, it's like that. I love it. Yeah. He's like Igor in the night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am famous. Awesome. Let's listen to mail. Yeah. We'll does he find like co- these recordings. Does he have a little coffee point. cup? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And he's, he's got a little pencil he taps and yeah. he's like, oh, oh, this is my show. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, he did bring us the mail. <laughs> Thank you, Igor. Thanks. Appreciate it. And so, first of all, our first comment comes from Yancey Street. Oh, Yancey. Yancey writes in and says, I just wanted to drop that you was guys a line. Name. <clears throat> I just wanted to drop you guys a line and say thank you very much for having such an entertaining show. I only recently discovered your podcast and been working through your back catalog. I'm so glad you seem to enjoy Dog Soldiers. This is one of my favorite werewolf movies. I would also recommend 2014's Late Phases and 2015's Howl as solid recent entries in the genre. I wanna, Late I Phases is Late really phases. good. Yeah, I liked it. I haven't good. seen Howl yet, but Late Phases was was awesome. Yeah, I haven't seen Howl yet either, but mm-hmm. did see Late mm-hmm. Phases and liked it. About our movie Near Dark. Tonight's movie. Dom Cree writes in and says, Damn, I thought you were watching Shocking Dark. Don't know what that is. I don't know. Uh, Shocking how you Dark that, Dom. is like, uh, I think, I think Dom just wanted to talk about Shocking Dark and he's like, I thought that's what <laughs> yeah. you were watching. Yeah. That's what he's doing. He's oh, suggesting Dom. This. Oh, Dom. He's like <laughs> subtly suggesting, like, watch uh-huh. Shocking Dark. It looks like a ripoff of The Terminator by like some, Ooh. is it the Filipino filmmakers or something like that? Dom, you'll have to let us know. <laughs> I would watch a movie just called Filipino Terminator. I if they that made that exists. movie, I'd copyright. <laughs> Filipino Terminator. Yeah. I'm in. Uh, there's Lady Terminator. That's a Filipino movie. Bam! There you go. It's a gotcha. Terminator alien crossover. Of- That's Shocking Dark. Is that Shocking Dark? I think so. That's a bad title for a movie. I honestly. may have seen Shocking like Dark, it. Dom. <laughs> this is surprising. It's not a good me. movie. <laughs> that's a, if it's the one I'm thinking of, that's a bad movie. It'd be worth bringing to the show because it's bad. Uh-huh. Oh well, my god! Go. Shock, maybe it is go. shocking. Dark. Holy shit! Yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna look, look, watch. Oh we're gonna look into this. We're gonna watch. Now. The, yeah, we're watching the yeah. trailer when we're done here. <laughs> uh, Useful Ruins writes in and says, <laughs> "Near Dark is the best vampire movie of all time." Damn. Wow! Bold statement. The vampire kid is an especially tragic character. No, fuck that kid. Fuck he was the kid. worst. Yeah, I'm I Mark felt nothing when he I died. I appreciate you writing in, but fuck that opinion. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> well, Please don't write in. Yeah, I'll keep writing in. I won't insult you every time. Insulting their Sean's listeners. Sean's going to start beef with everyone. I, yeah, it's beef night. <laughs> you want some fresh beef? I got it. <laughs> Serve it on a pot. Igor took that literally. He brought you a tray of oh, thank fresh you. Ooh, beef. That looks good. I'm going to try that. Uh, B Movie Poster Vault writes in and says, uh, Near Dark is a great time. Uh, it also has some of the best posters for a vampire movie of all time, plus a Blu-ray that pretended it was Twilight. Yes. Accurate. Bad, we were looking at some of those posters earlier. Some of them are pretty fantastic. Uh, Hand illustrated uh, paintings. Mm. Uh, Movie Guru writes in and says uh, the Lost Boys did better character development than Near Dark. I agree. Yeah. The characters were good in Near Dark, but it was like, oh, well, when they died. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yes. Yeah, basically. Uh, Robin Lineman Silverberg writes in and says Near Dark is one of the better 80s vampire flicks. And Carl Brooks writes in and says, can you talk about why Lance and Bill's acting grounded this movie versus the directorial style and how best to cosplay? Thanks. Uh, Well, I mean, she's inexperienced, I guess, is like the Mm -hmm. biggest reason for that, you know, Um, which I mean, it doesn't show as bad as nearly other inexperienced. You know, we've watched a lot of first movies for directors and like it doesn't show as bad. No, I've seen bad and inexperienced first time directors Mm -hmm. and movies and stuff like that. Uh, this it doesn't feel. I don't feel maybe a little inexperienced, but I don't feel bad whatsoever for this director. I feel like mm-hmm. it's a good. You know, you see the directors who have Academy the Academy Award winner. I mean, Catherine yeah, yeah. yeah. but I, I think establish for the people who don't know, she won the Oscar for the Hurt Locker. Yeah, did, uh, yeah, and Zero she's Dark a 30. good filmmaker. She's Not only did she win, filmmaker. she beat her ex husband yes. for the best picture. Which Oscar. makes you just go, mm-hmm. Bravo! Yeah, Bravo! Yeah. 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 Like I, that's what I'm saying. I see inexperienced. I don't see bad. Like you won movie. that divorce. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, won. yeah. Bravo! But and I think. I, I mean, I don't know this for sure, but I, I assume that she probably trusted Lance and um, Bill Paxton to 
to just kind of take the characters to where they wanted to. I think so. As exper- mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. as experienced actors at yeah. this point, I think so. Yeah, I'm, I think they helped her in being. I think so. Yeah. I'm glad she a took that director. set of actors from Aliens because if if this was all like relatively inexperienced, unknown people, I think it would be a way worse movie. I think so too. Mm-hmm. And you get that, especially coming right off Aliens, mm-hmm. like they has to already have that camaraderie. Mm-hmm. I think it helps mm-hmm. them a That's lot in this movie. Because right? like, they I hung think so. out together in an intense right. situation and, then, and rely yes. on each other. Yes, and then you're going to put them in a closer situation yeah. to be sort of kind of the uh, the ragtag family of these people. I think mm-hmm. that helps them a lot for this movie. Mm-hmm. So it, it also helps her as far as directing them goes. Mm-hmm. Good, right. qu- good question. Mm-hmm. Yes, thank yeah, you. Thank I like you, those Carl. questions. Yeah. Uh, as far as how best to cosplay, um, I'm, I mean, burn half. I mean, depends face. on who you want to be. I would say Lance <laughs> yeah. Henderson's going to be your easiest one to do. I think so. Or, or, put some or if you're, on your face, if you're, you're good. I feel like if you're um, if you're going for either if you're a woman or if you're going to go for like a, a cross dressing cosplay, um, I think that. Uh, Diamondback would be easy to do. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Yeah, or like White, bar scene. Bill I like yeah. Jeanette Goldstein. Easy. So if you cosplay as uh, Diamondback, uh, send pictures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, you, you could do bar scene. Bill Paxton. You know, get like a bloody so. T-shirt and a leather jacket. Yeah. And, yeah. The and the sunglasses. Sunglasses. I think that yeah. would be good. Um, I think the only way you can do Lance Henriksen, you have to have the eyes. Yeah. yeah. I think and, that's the only way you get to do him. And I think the best way it would play is if you did a group costume. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. That's the best way. We saw some of this for Lost Boys. Somebody. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah there's some bunch. great cosplay. There's some great cosplays yeah. for yeah. that. Yeah. I could just we're gonna look this up. See if anybody's done it. Carl, have you done it? You should take some pictures. I think there's some, probably some near dark <laughs> cosplays out there. All I right, know so, I've seen Bill Paxton before. Uh, for our last week's episode was Dog Soldiers. Joey Adams writes in and says American Werewolf in London is hands down the best werewolf movie. I don't remember much about Dog Soldiers other than cool looking werewolf special effects, but I can't remember if I like the movie or not. So I'll give it a rewatch if you guys suggest it. Yeah. Ooh, we. I I think we all did. Yeah. I definitely suggested. Definitely yeah. give it a, yeah, shot. That was a good one. All four that was recommended. A good one. Hey, uh, for someone who doesn't like werewolf movies, I recommend Yeah, it. yeah. Shit. That's, that's, a, that's a big deal. Right it's a big there. deal. Yeah. That was good. Uh, about our episode about the movie Dead Alive, Peter Jackson's film, Karate Warrior 2 writes in and says... <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, as Peter, Dead Jackson Alive, Peter Jackson said, wrote in. Fuck you guys. Peter Jackson wrote in and said about... No, <laughs> Peter Jackson wrote in and said, I'm starting a beef with Sean. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, bring it on, Peter Jackson. That's <laughs> beef. What are you doing now? <laughs> yep. uh, oh, damn. Again, I can you podcast. can get right to Sean at Saturday Night Freak Show at <laughs> Yahoo.com. Yeah, just direct him towards me. Uh, so Karate Warrior 2 writes in and says that... Uh, Okay, well, he's not talking about Dead Alive here. He's saying, not my favorite sla- splatter movie, but definitely an experience is Body Melt. It's a good idea, terrible execution. He chose not to inflict Dead Alive on himself until he heard the Saturday Night Free Show verdict. Well, I hope that you've watched mm-hmm. it. Yeah, give it a watch. Yeah, don't eat Body while you're watching it. Did that come out around the time, I'm assuming, the other Melt movies? I think so. Cause street, street Trash street and trash. whatnot. Yeah, there was, body a whole, melt. there was a whole thing I of think Body Melt movies. I watched the trailer for this. I think so. Yeah. I feel familiar. like we did. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're it's still in consideration there. Karate Warrior Two. Yep. Whoever okay. you may Whoever be. Whoever you may be. <laughs> Uh, I, Greg, still want, I still want Karate Warrior One to write into us and be yeah. like, "Hey, yeah. I'm here too." <laughs> hey guys, hey guys. Greg I hate your show. Roseboom writes he in and says, with you too. Uh, <laughs> "Yeah, he says Dead Alive is the best of Peter Jackson's early movies. Bad Taste Might is be. great and allowed Peter Jackson and crew to hone their skills for the Super Bowl of gore that is Dead Alive, yeah. aka Brain Dead, as everybody else. That's knows. a good like way to describe it. Right. The Super, Super Bowl, Bowl of gore. gore. Yeah, that's I a like pull that. quote." right there it should have been yeah. on the box uh, Edward Lemmick writes in and says uh, Brain Dead easily is the best of Peter Jackson's early movies it's campy gory fun one of my favorite zombie movies it's a fun movie did we tell everybody how they can write into us we may have but we, we should probably tell them we again. should do it again that's right they can get a hold of us on Facebook facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show on Twitter at Sat Freak Show they can email us Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com or catch us on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show that's right we're going to go around the room now, and we're going to find out what everybody thought individually of tonight's movie Near Dark, starting with... Holly! What did you that think? That was a surprise. <laughs> yeah. I can see her right there. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about Near Dark? Um, Near Dark. Twilight I, of the 1980s, yeah, they, apparently. No, don't call it that. <laughs> that is a mischaracterization. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's say the insp- an inspiration of Twilight. We'll say that. Um... Well, I I was actually really bored with this movie. 
Um, <laughs> it didn't. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> it really didn't do much for me. I've seen a lot of vampire movies, and I I like the general feel of this movie. I like the tone of it. Um, I enjoy the like the 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 ragtag. Um, nomad group I, I think that the that works for vampire culture um it just makes sense so that aspect i enjoyed and and like sean and i were saying earlier that the whole the poker scene in the hotel room that was my favorite scene of this movie i just i wanted more of that i, I want more of the dynamic because um like like you said the, or who was it that said i didn't care about the characters dying at the end which one of our... So I think somebody in the thing. One of our readers said uh, that. Or readers. <laughs> listeners. <laughs> ah, see? Gotcha. You've, got, you've got us all gotcha. doing it. You got Thank me, you, Sean. dear reader. I appreciate you writing it. Brailler. <laughs> Thank you, Brailler. Um, I I agree that I didn't care about... I mean, I know the, the vampires, so really you're not supposed to care about them very much in this particular type of vampire movie. Um, but I, I didn't have a feel for... But I didn't really have a feel for any of them, to be honest. I didn't feel for... Um, Caleb or really anyone in this movie I wanted more character development I wanted more of those little moments that made you feel for them um, I didn't I didn't I didn't feel it for May either I didn't see her I think she was supposed to be kind of a tragic victim type of vampire and I didn't get that at all like she was very much a murderers and a murderess and she just seemed completely strung out all the time and I, d- I didn't get that that victim feeling like I was I didn't understand why he was still in love with her. I thought f- I was like, there's a lot of red flags here, buddy. <laughs> you you might want to pass on this relationship. Um, She's very sexy. Though. Is she? That all right. Is, is that mean- all that matters to you, Colin? <laughs> I, it, Sexiness. I'd say it matters to Caleb. It does. It, feel, it really does. I feel like that could be said about most vampire movies, though. Like the ro- the romantic relationship in most vampire movies is not ideal or even healthy in yeah. most ways. <laughs> no, so, not you at know. All. yeah, I want to see some ugly vampire love. Let's let's see some of that. That makes more sense, right? Ugly vampire but that, love. That yeah. goes, but that goes against what vampires are because they're supposed right. to be predators that you know glamour us with their good right. looks and entrap us. So you're never going to see that. I know it's true. That's part of their mythology. Um, but yeah, like. I, there was there was just a lot of about a lot about this movie that didn't really work for me. And also, if she's gonna be like with him now, now that she's human again, like her his dad's not gonna accept her. <laughs> After all that they went through, he's gonna be like, Dad, she's gonna live with us now. That would not work. Well, he can move out. Like this. it's a rescue situation, right? It's like no. uh, taking in uh, what's his name, David and Roseanne. Uh, um, a Roseanne parallel. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I did not expect that. Wow, yeah. Um, Hide on no. that 70s show. May. <laughs> there you go. He's Hide on that I mean, 70s Colin's show, yeah. hitting all the marks with these uh, <laughs> mentions here. Like, they make sense it to does. his point. It does make sense. I still don't think it would work. Bravo, Colin. Bravo. <laughs> You're welcome. I still don't think her, his dad would accept her. But, yeah, I don't know. There was, there was just... There was a lot lacking in this movie there was a lot more that i wanted from it um it didn't it didn't hit the points that a vampire movie should hit i think um i understand why lost boys is more hyped up it's much more entertaining um yeah it just it didn't really do it for me i can't recommend near dark okay i first saw this movie when i was in high school um and i am not really uh into vampire movies I, I mean, I like The Lost Boys, but I don't like it nearly as much as most people do. Um, I, I'm a werewolf movie person. I think it's interesting that we're doing a vampire movie right after we just did a werewolf movie. Is uh, this the reaction movie, Colin? <laughs> okay. Um, but I really, I, I mean, like I said, I lo- like two of my favorite genres of film are horror and westerns, and that these two are coming together in this. And I never get this. Like, this is a meeting of two genres I rarely Except ever get. Sundown, The Vampire in Retreat. No, never seen it. You're no, saying no. words yep. again. It's got Colin. Bruce Campbell in it. Ooh, oh, well, well I'll, go, I'll watch it now. Really? Yeah. Why didn't we watch that movie? Now you're yeah. saying words that make sense. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, like, this is two of my two things I love coming together. Um, and, okay, so for me, 
Bill Paxton is in this movie is to me what Jamie Gertz in Lost Boys is for you two. <laughs> like I had the biggest crush on him when I saw this. I was gonna movie. say, are you lusting after Bill Paxton? Yeah, in this I movie? was. I was in like, this so, movie. Yeah, yeah. Are you serious? That's funny. I I it can says a lot about you. I, <laughs> I cannot resist a darker guy in a leather jacket. I'm just like I see. I, I'm like I, I'm I hated sold. I hated him in this movie. I don't hate him. I think his Seri- acting. Oh, I think man. his acting was great. No, I love it. But he's his doing character. what he's supposed to be doing in this movie. But his character. I hated this character. I so could much. watch a whole movie of just his character oh my God. like I, I would That's watch funny. a Bill Paxton spin off of this. That's um, funny. Uh, and like, <laughs> so Caleb yeah. starting the Bill Paxton Appreciation, Appreciation Club. Club. Yes. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, go- I mean, we can all be part of that club. That's fine. <laughs> May he rest. In. May he rest. May he rest. God damn it! He was yeah. what 61, 63? Mm-hmm. Jesus. He was behind so Tragic. many great Fuck. fucking Tragic. roles. Yeah. yeah. I guess I'm proud of everyone for not doing the Paxton Pullman slip tonight. No one did it once. No, no. So yay! There's only one Bill Paxton. I know yeah. it happens God sometimes. It. Sometimes it, you don't mean it, and it just comes out that way, though. Um, so I really like this movie. Um, but if you are not okay with the pace of a Western, you might find this a little slow. Uh, I am more here for the Western and the violence and for Bill Paxton than I am for the vampires. Like the vampire part of it is so low on the list of what's interesting about this movie to me. Um, but I would definitely recommend it. I think it's worth a watch, especially cause we don't have a lot of, um, good horror movies directed by women. And not only like, is this directed by an Oscar award winning female director, but this was like her first like solo film is a like a weird horror western. Like that's a very ambitious project for a first film, I think. So I think I think if you want to be educated in film, you gotta watch it. It's it's a necessary piece there. Um but if if it if what we've said so far does not sound like it would appeal to you, then you probably won't like it. But I would definitely recommend it. What do you think, Sean? I think you gotta give um I mean, you got to give, I think you give credit to Catherine Bigelow for the movie she made in this. Um, I have problems with this movie. Um, my biggest problem is like, I don't understand why these people like each other. I don't understand why the vampire family likes each other exactly. and sits around. Yes. This is I my, think it's a method of survival more than anything. But, well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm wondering. I'm like, it, it has to be at this point. Like mm-hmm. these, it feels like a bunch of people have found each other, whether they like each other or not, maybe it doesn't matter to them as much anymore. They've been around. They've, they found the people that have survived over the years. Um, they have to stick together because, you know, they'll survive, uh, longer if they just stick together and become a you know uh, just a ramshackle family at this point, but I, I and but you get little scenes like we talked about like the whole drawing the guns on each other during the poker game and everything, which is like that's what I want more of. Mm-hmm. Like that to yeah. me says a lot more about the relationships in the group yeah. than anything else in the movie. But unfortunately, we don't get anything else in the movie. Right. I get that they're there for survival, but I think either. Having been together that long, they either have to completely hate each other or they have found things over the time that they find uh, that they like about each other or that they find comfort in each other because they've been together so long. If they've been together so long, I think there is something they can find in each other that makes being alive for that long um, more comfortable, easier to get through. Like the, I, I, I don't think these people would just completely stick together just because they are vampires and living forever. I think they'd have to find something in one another that they like. I don't see that in this movie. And that's, right. I think, my main problem with those characters. I want to see why they like each other and why they've stuck around so much. Right. Um, but I don't get it from any of them. I don't understand why. And it all comes back to, like, just survival. I feel like all these people are together for is survival. Um, May only feels like she's with this group for survival because she couldn't make it on her own they, for some reason. They pull the trigger really fast on who they want to change to have to be like their partner. <sighs> like he, like she chose him after like a few minutes. Yeah. Like, That's a yeah. very twilighty thing. And too. yeah, and then um, we see the kid does the same thing with Sarah. Yeah, like, like they really found, fast. Like yeah. yes, I want this kid to be my partner. Yeah. Like they're so quick with the trigger on that. It really is. Um, there's. Yeah, also, and I don't, I mean, it's, everything seems to be real quick, like Caleb and May falling in love that mm-hmm. quick, why, like, the, it's almost like an automatic dedication to these people, like, right off the bat. Yeah. But when his family comes around, he automatically skips out on that. It's just like, I mean, pick a lane here, people, like, where do you want to be, uh, you know, where are you going? And I know it's, you know... It's a weird situation for Caleb because he just got turned into a vampire. So he's kind of, you know, right. he's uh, on the fence for all of this as to where he's going to end up. But I mean, as for the characters, like I wanted more from those characters. I think we could have got it. 
Uh, but I didn't get enough from all of them. I It just made me not care by the time we got to the end. I don't yeah. care if, especially because of the, the kind of the creepy way that Caleb was with May earlier on. Like, I'm not exactly rooting for him in this movie. Right, yeah. He's, He's not really seen, a hero. It doesn't feel like yeah. it to me. Like, I don't care if he gets home to his family. I also don't know a lot about his family. Like, right. I know he's got a mother or a father and a sister, but I don't know anything about these people. Yeah. I don't care about them. They seem to be very concerned that he's that's missing. That's fine. And that's, that's great. That's but I don't care get. that he yeah. gets back to them. I don't care that he survives. I don't. There's something missing where I don't particularly care about mm-hmm. where the characters end up at the end of the day. Yeah. I think that's a problem for this movie. And it makes me not really care about them and not care about watching the movie again. Um, I, characters is the big thing for me. There's certain things I like about this movie. Um, I think there should have been, uh, I like the, the kind of like the, uh, the gore and the blood that we got in this movie. I think it could have benefited from much more of that. I think so If too. there was certain things cut out from that, I think put them back in. When I it want, was done, it was done right. It was. Yeah. And I also like the, um, because the character of Bill Paxton, I think in his kind of craziness, as far as he acts towards the people especially that bar scene now that is a memorable bar scene i'll give them that Mm -hmm. and um i like what they do in there um i think it should have been more uncomfortable for the viewer as far as going to that it's i want it to feel like a family but i want to feel like it's a family that they're all involved in kind of the craziness and how they act at this point as far as killing people because it's it's uh it's it's bizarre and it's gory and they're just violent people i wanted more of that from them um yeah, I just don't get enough from the characters in this movie. There's some good elements of it, but for me, the whole thing doesn't add up to a movie that I want to revisit. So I don't recommend Near Dark. Not quite enough for me. I'm picky with my vampire movies anyway, yeah. so this is not one that's going to make make it in the top. So I would skip Near Dark. All right. Uh, well, then it comes to me to set the record straight. Then. Set it straight, Colin. <laughs> Tell us why we're wrong. You're dark. Well, I've lived with this thing so long now, right? So it's that's, like, I mean, that's also the difference. You've lived with it so yeah. long. This is my first time watching yeah, this movie. Yeah, I yeah. think, and that's the thing. Like, it, you know, it has, to me, like, the, the characters do exist in a space in my mind where it's like I feel like I know them and know why that they're making all the decisions that they do. And, you know, I think that's just... I don't know, maybe because I saw it so young, right? And you had more imagination when you were a kid or something, or, you know. But, I mean, it does kind of feel like uh, Homer was in love with May and hoped mm. that, you know, that's why he turned her, right? Was to stay with him. And the fact that he ends up, you know, or she ends up going after this, uh, you know, other guy, <laughs> you know, like burns him. And then he's like, I'm going to get revenge. You know, I yeah. mean, like all that stuff is like, this is, he's supposed to be this old guy in a, you know, yeah. or older guy in a, um, you know, at least he's probably mentally as old as she is, you know? Um, yeah. I don't know. The, I think this is the attraction of near dark, you know, it's like, it's, well, it's twofold. One, being it has this cast of characters as the vampire family, kind of like a uh, house of a thousand corpses where you go into it and the villains are more interesting than the, uh, the protagonists. Mm-hmm. Um, because they're all, I think like really, um, <clears throat> interesting types. Like I can, you know, it's through inference, right. That I'm kind of, you know, building a his- living history of how all these people came together how they relate to each other, uh, you know, and the personalities on display are all, you know, interesting. You know, I mean, Bill Paxton stands out the most is like because he's just a, you know, live wire basically in this movie, which is one of these great Bill Paxton performances where it seems like, you know, I mean, I don't know if he was directed so much or just let off the chain, but, you know, it's basically like a wilder, uh, you know, a role for him. But the vampires are really cool cool not in a way that you want to like emulate like lost boys are cool right you want to be one of the lost boys yeah i can imagine colin wanting to be wanting to be one of the lost boys (laughs) absolutely (laughs) you don't necessarily want to be with the near dark near dark vampires but it's i think that's what appeals to me about it it's like you're having this like grimy group of i mean basically they're like um 
a bucket of rats, right? It's like <laughs> they've just come to rely on each other over the years and have found out that these are the most trustworthy people who can watch your back. And so there's a mutual respect, I think, going on amongst them where, you know, the first time I think that we saw, you know, tonight when I was watching it, when Diamondback and uh, and Lance Hendrickson's Jesse are driving around and he's reminiscing about, like, you know, when I first turned to you, I'm like sitting there going like, how many people have been part of this gang who aren't there today? You know, like they've been turning people over the years and like there's this history, right? He's like 200 years old mm. and there have been, you know, other people coming and going. And, you know, uh, May, I think, like you said, doesn't really fit in because she's the youngest. And, you know, obviously, you know, Diamondbacks mothering her and, you know, uh, Homer wants to get with her and she's got her own like agenda. But that's why she's also can be redeemed. Right. She hasn't been in the, the circle for long enough. Um, and the other thing that it brings to the vampire genre, I think, is the melding of uh, um, the Western. You know, it's taking that, you know, like it's the antithesis of the gothic vampire movie, which I think is what you had up until this point in time, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it was so many Dracula movies and the European vampire thing and like. You know, Eric Red's like, I'm going to make an American vampire. You know, what's that going to be? It's going to be, you know, like some guy from the Southwest and this or this group. And uh, that atmosphere is like really compelling, I think. Um, I don't know. You know, I mean, as far as the direction of the movie, there are moments that need to be there that we don't get to see. Which is really strange where it feels like they ran out of money yeah. and couldn't shoot. You know, the vampires picking Sarah up and throwing her in the car. For instance, we just see, you know, uh, Caleb yelling. Yeah, there was that several was an odd shots. You know, there's several moments like that in the entire movie where it was like, he just didn't have the money to get the shot. It was like, there was the end of the day and you had to go. And, yeah. you know, there's some strange edits where it seems like they come in in the middle of dialogue, especially, I think, the first time that we meet Homer in the, in the RV. I'm like, I'm not sure what he said because it felt like, you know, they clipped right in in the middle of it. So. As far as putting the film together, I think it does, you know, uh, it's like, how do you how do you spot talent right out of uh, a first time director? It's like, clearly, we know who Catherine Bigelow became, although I can't nail down her style because the person who made uh, Point Break and um, Strange Days is the same person. The person who made Hurt Locker and Zero Dark Thirty is the same person, but I can't believe that the person who made those two movies made the other two movies. <laughs> right, yeah. Made this movie, you know, so it's like I don't I don't see like a signature style, except that I think that, you know, she's grown from, you know, obviously starting out uh, this is a relatively low budget film. It proves that you know you can work with actors and get this kind of, you know, thing off the ground. And uh it's an interesting um uh, you know, to work in a genre where it, the it, the concept is gonna make you successful even if, you know, um, even if, you know, you're not that good at it, you know, to start off with. So as a springboard for a director, I think, you know, it's good to start off in these kind of things. And it's interesting to see where she's gotten to. But um, I don't know that, I, you know, do you hold it against it? The end, I guess, because at the end of the movie, I remember even the first time I watched it, it has one of the shittiest endings of a vampire movie. It just kind of like stops on a freeze frame and is like, yeah. yeah. and I think a lot of that, we didn't mention that, you know, Tangerine Dream did the score. Yeah. Which is an odd score for them because it's a lot of electric guitar, which I don't, you know, I mean, one of Tangerine Dream, you know, they did like Legend, Legend yeah. and Risky uh, Sorcerer, you know, and those, you know, electronic scores and not necessarily, uh, 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 you know, electric guitar stuff. Yeah. And so I think that, you know, another, you know, we were talking about this on our Night of the Creeps episode. I think the score actually lets this movie down. Yeah. I think a, a more... A more competent, um, you know, uh, somebody who made movie uh, music and studied movie music might have been able to paste over, mm -hmm. smooth out the rough spots in the, in the film. Uh, I did like Tim Thomerson as the dad. I didn't mention that, but because that guy's a comedian. Is he a comedian? He's a stand-up comedian who became <laughs> an actor. And, like, this is a dramatic role, which I think, you know, he has, like, sensitivity and warmth as the uh, the father. Yeah, he did a fine job as the, as the dad. He's the guy from Trancers. Anybody He's seen Trancers? No, he was in job. Metal Storm. He was, he was, in Metal was Storm. the fucking Han Solo guy in Metal Storm. For ten minutes he was Han Solo. For ten minutes. <laughs> <clears throat> um, <laughs> it's here nor there. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, long story short, I'm going all around the world here, but uh, I guess that's, you know, it's like if you, you know, a lot of people are calling it a vampire classic, 
I don't know that I would call this a classic of the genre. Lost Boys is of, you know, the two movies, again, we keep comparing them because they came out the same year. Right. Lost Boys is more entertaining. It's more what you expect from a vampire movie. You get yeah. vampires, mm-hmm. you know, you pay money for vampires, you get it. This is trying to, you know, be a revisionist vampire thing. And that by itself kind of makes it uh, worth consideration. Although I think, you know, people need to go back and watch George Romero's Martin, which got to a lot of, you know, the themes where Near Dark is. It did it like 10 years earlier in uh, in the 70s. So uh, what does it bring new to the vampire genre? I think, like I said, you know, the, the deconstructionist, uh, revisionist thing. It's interesting it, that evolved, you know, post Near Dark. Um, but I don't know. It's a, it's a decent film. It has, I think, uh, electric performances from the cast. Uh, and that makes it, in my estimation, something you should check out. So you should see Near Dark. That's the end of my long-winded wrap-up. <laughs> and I'm fairly intoxicated at this point. So I'm going to turn this over to Sean, who's going to tell us whose movie are we watching next week. Next week, we're going to watch... Holly's movie. Me. We're doing a little. Why switcheroo. are we doing that, Sean? We're doing a little switcheroo <laughs> because I don't know if you know, uh, dear listener, dear reader, but dear coming, Brailler. dear yeah. Brailler, yeah. Uh, coming out soon. A certain dancing clown is remaking his cinematic debut after twenty seven. After twenty seven years, years mm-hmm. uh, and so I th- we're going to be doing a special double uh, double fun freak show episode. Freak show field trip. A freak show, freak field, show trip. field trip. This is this is new to us. A freak show field trip coming up. We might be going to see a certain clown in theaters and reviewing a nineteen nineties miniseries classic. I don't know. It depends on how you feel about it. It's definitely <laughs> if if old means classic. If yeah, old. Oh, I mean that might be it. it. Yeah. Old. Yeah, but uh, again, I think all those people are basing it off of the last time they saw it. Yeah, so revisionist history. I think so. Yeah. So we're gonna dive back into it. And see, <laughs> oh, see what I did there. See what I did there. We're gonna dive back into it and see: Does the old stuff stand up? Does the new one break that mold? Are we? It's just, I'm. Ex- it's exciting. This is a fun event for the free this show. This is gonna be an event for the free show. Do movies that we never do current movies. No, we uh, never hardly do, ever. But we're like, going. But it's a double. It's a double fun yeah. episode. Double fun freak show because we're gonna look at the old and we're gonna look at the new. Mm-hmm. And because Sean we is, rely for both. God damn it! Holy yeah. shit. Yes. <laughs> and Sean is going to be our host on this little journey. I'll be our host on this journey. So next week is clowns, the bus clowns, <laughs> spiders, and all. You're the so. bus driver for the field trip, there right? We go. <laughs> You're uh, our tour guide. Yeah. yeah. Yes, so we're skipping Sean for next week. Skipping me for next week, and it's Holly's going to pick the movie. What's Holly picking next we're week? We're going to go to Pet Cemetery. Mm-hmm. All right. 1989. A Stephen King double oh, shit. Wow. We're yeah. going. Yeah. We're it's double. all Stephen